I've recently been reading about some of the breakthroughs from Chinese battery giant CATL, and when they say they have a new breakthrough, they almost always deliver on it. So when I read about their new batteries, including one called the condensed battery, that use biomimicry and inspiration from nature, I got pretty excited. In this video, we're going to dig deeper into some of CATL's latest projects and how they might have just solved the problem solid state batteries originally set out to fix. If they deliver on their promise, this will make solid state batteries obsolete. Now, I don't say that lightly. I've published research papers on solid state batteries and have spoken extensively to PhD battery chemists over the last few weeks about this. And everyone agrees that what CATL are doing is nothing short of incredible. It isn't just the high energy densities CATL are reporting that makes me say that solid state batteries could be made obsolete. It comes down to the innovative chemistry that they're using. This chemistry bypasses the need for solid state batteries altogether, and by the end of this video, you'll understand why. Since its inception, CATL has grown rapidly and become a major supplier of batteries to a wide range of international car manufacturers, including Tesla, BMW, Volkswagen, and Volvo. This has positioned CATL as the largest manufacturer of EV batteries in the world, known for its innovations in battery lifespan, safety, and energy density. As well as their condensed battery, CATL have been working on a number of other innovative batteries, which have been making their way into popular electric vehicles like the Tesla Model Y. The condensed battery builds up on these breakthroughs, so we'll go through them one by one to build up the bigger picture of these new cells. All of these breakthroughs focus on three core parts of the battery. These are the anode, cathode, and electrolyte. The anode is what electrons flow out of whilst discharging, and the cathode is where the electrons flow in. The electrolyte is the bit in the middle that allows the flow of electrical charge, in the form of lithium ions, between the anode and cathode. Along with some other parts that aren't important for this video, these components create a circuit that stores and releases energy, powering devices from smartphones to electric cars. Changing the materials and designs of these three components can have massive impacts on the lifespan and energy density of the battery. For example, in solid state batteries, the electrolyte is a solid material instead of a liquid. However, the whole reason we want solid state batteries is not because of the solid electrolyte, but because it allows us to use lithium as the anode, instead of the usual graphite anodes. Using lithium in the anode is useful because it is lightweight, allows higher voltages, and can store more lithium ions during the charging process which all lead to extremely high energy densities. The reason solid state batteries should enable the lithium metal anodes is because they're meant to stop unwanted things called dendrites from forming. However, more and more research is showing that these solid electrolytes might not actually be that good at stopping these dendrites from forming. This is extremely problematic, as if they grow too large, they can short circuit the battery, making it all go bang. You can think of this like Japanese knotweed that can always find the weak spots of a seemingly solid road and eventually burst through. In batteries with lithium metal anodes, dendrites grow faster than usual due to the higher reactivity of lithium. So if solid electrolytes can't actually help us use lithium metal anodes, what have CATL done in their condensed battery? And how have they redesigned other parts of the cells to, in their words, be used in large passenger aircraft. We'll look into all of that after I tell you about the must-have VPN from Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that gives you access on an unlimited number of devices with just one account. VPNs can be a great way to help with security online. And with Surfshark's multi-hop system to put two VPN servers between you and your online destination, this is better than ever. You can also get around geo-blocked content to see the shows or websites you love, no matter where you are in the world. I even used Surfshark recently for renting a car abroad, as it gave me cheaper prices depending on which country it thought I was booking from. You can also add on security combos like the Surfshark Alert, 
allowing you to monitor your personal data and get real-time breach alerts if it is ever leaked online. Don't restrict or risk your time online and get Surfshark's VPN using my link in the description. Also, if you enter promo code Xeroth, you'll get an extra four months for free. And if for any reason it doesn't seem like a fit, they have a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's really no reason not to try it out. Now let's dive deeper into CATL's latest breakthroughs. The two batteries that form the building blocks of the condensed battery are the Tenor and Shenjing Plus systems. Tenor is designed for grid storage and will apparently show no degradation in the first five years of operation. And the Shenjing Plus can allow electric vehicles 1000 kilometers or 620 miles of range with extremely fast charging. The big secrets to CATL's new systems come from their 3D honeycomb anodes and their biomimetic electrolyte interfaces. So let's see what that actually means. In the anode, we want to be able to get as many lithium ions in and out as possible. We also want to be able to do this quickly without damaging the battery cell. This is where the honeycomb anode comes in, which is the big breakthrough for the Shenjing Plus cells, but probably hasn't made it into the condensed batteries just yet. The honeycomb structure can be used at the microstructural or atomic scale. This image shows the honeycomb anode microstructure. This honeycomb structure increases the surface area of the anode because more of it is exposed, which in turn increases how quickly the lithium ions can get into it. The small open gaps in the honeycomb also give space for the anode to expand as the lithium ions go in. This is important because otherwise the battery can swell slightly during charging, which adds stress and causes aging to happen more quickly. The type of honeycomb structure that CATL seem to be using in the Shenzhen pack, however, is at the atomic scale. This image shows a honeycomb structure of carbon that has strong bonds holding each of the carbon atoms together. This means when the lithium ions come in to sit within the network of carbon atoms, the strong bonds stop the anode from expanding, which again helps reduce aging, especially during fast charging. Now, the biggest breakthrough is of the biomimetic electrolyte interfaces. This same discovery is what can allow both the condensed battery to use a lithium metal anode and the Tenor battery to reportedly achieve zero degradation in its first five years. In the batteries we use today, when you charge them for the first time, a thin interface layer forms between the anode and the electrolyte. This acts as a protective barrier to reduce dendrite formation. However, these interface layers aren't strong enough for when we want to use lithium metal anodes, like the ones in the condensed battery. This is why CATL's biomimetic interface is specially designed and tuned to be stronger than ever, holding back even the most forceful dendrites from breaking through. The biomimetic electrolyte interface is formed using something called self-assembling artificial interfaces. Through a chemical process of aligning polymers at the interface, structures similar to those found in animal cells can be constructed that are both mechanically strong and conductive. These polymers can be thought of as strands of string or spaghetti, where one end is attracted to the lithium and the other end is repelled away from it. This causes the polymers to band together in a uniform shape, like troops on the front line of battle, ready to stop the invading dendrites. This means CATL's new interface layer is strong enough to withstand even the powerful dendrites from lithium metal anodes. In the condensed battery, the rest of the electrolyte after this breakthrough interface is a gel. This is similar to the liquid electrolyte in a normal cell, but it is what enables the special electrolyte interface to form at the anode. CATL haven't given too much detail about the cathodes, but you can bet they'll be ultra high energy density ones like those used in long range electric vehicles. I really can't overstate that this ability to use lithium metal anodes without the need for solid electrolytes is a real game changer because solid electrolytes have a whole load of challenges that haven't yet been addressed. 
and judging by recent progress, those problems could keep moving five years away. However, this new biomimetic electrolyte interface could be a solution that's available now. Solid state batteries were never really the aim. It has always been the lithium metal anode. CATL have been clear that this is not a lab scale demonstration. They have said that this is currently operational in a ton scale electric passenger aircraft, though we are yet to see videos. They quote energy densities of 500 watt hours per kilogram. That is around double Tesla's flagship 4680 cells. I can't wait to see more on these developments over the next year or two and would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. As you're still watching, please subscribe to the channel, it's free and will keep you up to date on all the other videos I make about sustainable engineering around the world, like this one on a new wind turbine design. And as always, thanks for watching.